we're not necessarily looking for a return, but we're certainly looking to, to fund enterprises that are, that are sustainable and, and, and ongoing. Some examples, though, in regions that where we truly have um, a great deal of marginalization would be, say, for example, the Tuaregs in, in Niger or the former slave population in Mauritania. A few weeks ago, I was in uh, northern uh, Kenya in the Turkana area, which again is an area that's been for a long time ignored. So we're trying to, to focus on, on populations that are not getting uh, mm -hmm. reached by current development agencies or oftentimes by their own governments. Where they are being reached, sometimes, you know, it just, it's an ongoing mission. Uh, you know, have you set specific time frames to deploy capital to these uh, specific uh, projects and to see what kind of results? Yeah, well, we, we have uh, every year an appropriation from, from Congress, and Congress expects us to spend it wisely, so we have self-imposed uh, uh, time, time deadlines in that regard. I think most of these projects um, you find are, are ones that go from a three to five year period. And the important thing about the model is that Africans themselves figure out what they want. It's not, it's not USADF saying this is what we think you need. In fact, we have no American consultants on the ground in, in Africa. We have 50 people here, all of whom are Africans. Uh, we look to them to come up with the ideas, and then we say, hey, we'll give you some of this initial startup uh, funding. You've got three to five years to make it work, uh, but it's you're, you're the ones who are going to have to yeah. implement it. In the face of that, what are some of the challenges you face in getting your objectives met? Well, there are so many, but um, um, one, of course, is identifying uh, the people who can, on the ground who can really make it happen. Um, although I will tell you, I am enormously encouraged as I go around um, to different countries at the the level of entrepreneurism that's, that's out there. They're, they, they're, uh, Africans really uh, want to create this kind of enterprise. They're excited about it. They, they, need, the, they need the tools sometimes and, and sometimes the financing, particularly in this, this middle area that we're going to be talking about at this conference. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are doing great things in microfinance. There's money from the Chinese and others for large infrastructure projects. But those who are entrepreneurs who are trying to create jobs for, for say, 100 or 200 people have trouble getting the financing. You've got to get onto the continent to actually get that feel, though. And, yeah. you know, without having done that, there's a lot of perceptions about Africa and where we stand right now, investing on the continent, doing business here. On the flip side of what we've been talking about, how do you advise political and business leaders on the continent when it actually comes to managing perceptions about themselves. Right. We had a panel about this yesterday. And one of the things I said, it's not about image. Uh, it's about creating greater understanding. So many Americans, for example, have no idea of the, the incredible diversity within Africa. They just think of Africa as a continent. It doesn't matter whether you're here in Tanzania or you're in Senegal, it all is Africa. Of course, we know it's, it's so different. So I think it's a matter of, of really creating much greater understanding and some of the um, amazing success stories that are here. And the growth that we're now seeing in Africa is really quite extraordinary, particularly when the West has been experiencing the problems that they've, that they've seen. Yeah. People are, American business uh, people are looking for growth opportunities, and, and increasingly I think they're going to see Africa as one. Is there anything that uh, the U.S. Uh, can be doing to help African governments cope in the current environment where we've got a situation like Greece teetering on the edge of uh, default uh, and emerging markets taking strains? I mean, capital aside, we've got to be looking at sustainable growth here. So, you know, so what are you doing in that regard? Well, I think, first of all, by the way, it's important to point out that Greece is not, is, is not indicative of what's happening in, in Africa. Greek, Greece has an unsustained unsustainable debt, and that's not the case, uh, unfortunately, for most, most of Africa. That said, obviously, what's happening in Greece has created strains throughout emerging markets, uh, and I think the West has an obligation to try to make sure that we restore confidence that, uh, first of all, point out the differences, and there are significant ones, um, but, uh, but stand behind uh, African partners.